Hey you, my name is Emily, the Drone Angel, and welcome to your one-stop shop for everything drone related. Now over the past 10 years, I applied what I learned in photography school to my career as a portrait photographer and then again as a drone pilot. What I've learned is that vertical aerial panoramas provide a very unique point of view of a setting. So today I'm going to teach you how to stitch together a vertical pano in Photoshop utilizing two editing methods. But before we get started, please take a moment to hit the subscribe button so you're notified when new videos go up. Ugh, it's water, I promise. Can I can't wink. I can't wink. I'll try winking and I can't wink. Anyways, in one of my previous YouTube videos, I taught you guys how to capture a vertical pano with your drone. Now I'm going to teach you how to stitch it together in Photoshop into one seamless shot. There are multiple ways to stitch together a vertical pano. Today I'm going to teach you a more easy way to do it, and then I'm going to teach you a tedious way that I prefer, and I'll explain why I prefer it. I recommend having some experience in Photoshop before watching this video, just because at times I'm going to talk a little faster and assume that you know the basics of Photoshop. If you don't know the basics yet, feel free to YouTube Photoshop for Beginners, and I'm sure there's a million videos that you can look up. You want to select all of the images that you plan to use for this vertical panel. First things first, click Photo, then click Edit In, and click Open Layers in Photoshop. Now at this point, you will see a bunch of layers on the right side of your Photoshop panel. Photoshop expects you to work with horizontal images as a panorama. I know, it's very old school. So you must work with the images horizontally and then merge them together before rotating them vertically as you wish. You want to select all of the images that you plan to use for this vertical pano. Click on Image, Image Rotation, 90 degrees clockwise. It's going to rotate all of those layers 90 degrees clockwise. Then click Edit, Auto Align Layers. You want to click the Auto button on the left and then click OK. Now what it's doing is it's aligning all of those layers into one single shot. You will notice that some of these lines in between the layers need to be blended in. Click Edit, Auto Blend Layers, and then click Panorama and press OK. Now it's blending all those selected layers into one. To rotate it back, click on Image, Image Rotation, 90 degrees counterclockwise and there you go you can kind of see that it tried replicating the water on the left and right side it's a bit unrealistic so what I like to do is crop into the image a bit that's the easy method to creating a vertical pano unfortunately I wasn't able to add this extra layer of the sky for this Photoshop merge tool just because Photoshop had a hard time assessing where to place it in the image which is another reason why I like to edit things manually. I know some people prefer just to click the auto stitch button in Photoshop to stitch together a vertical pano quickly and easily. But for me personally, I like to have control over every single layer of an image. And sometimes I might expand certain parts of the image as you see in this video. You wanna select all of the images that make up the vertical pano in Lightroom. You can't see it here, but I actually have a Photoshop icon below. So I'm dragging the images into that Photoshop icon. It's going to open the images into Camera Raw, and I want to select all those images on the film strip on the left and click Open Images. All of the photos opened up as individual images that you can see on this top panel here. The first thing I'm going to do is reset my color palette by clicking this button. Click Command J to copy that bottom layer. And then you're going to click C and extend the image up basically imagining where you're going to place those images to create that vertical pano. We're going to take the next part of the image, pull it out, click V to select, and drag that image into the composite. Click Z and drag your mouse left and right to zoom in and out of the image. I like to zoom in a bit just so I can really get a sense on where I'm going to place that top image. You can also lower the opacity of that top layer so you can really get a sense of where it's being placed and just move the layer to the exact spot you want to place it. Click C and then click on the corner of the image to extend the image to make it larger. 
And ladies and gentlemen, this is why I like to edit vertical panos in Photoshop manually. Oh my god, I need to start wearing glasses again. <laughs> Everything is so sharp and big. I'm not joking, but this is why I like to do it is because I'm able to extend certain parts of the image, making them larger than life, creating that unique depth of field that you see in my work. Because when you're shooting with a Mavic 2 Pro and a Phantom 4 Pro, it's really hard to get that unique depth of field, and I'm able to create it in post. I'm not kidding though, I need to start wearing glasses. <laughs> Similar to the first edit, you can really see some defined lines are created because that's where the images met. So you want to blend them in. To do this, make sure that you have the top layer selected and click the little camera tool in the bottom right, which is also known as a layer mask. Click B for brush because we're going to brush away that strong line that you see. And now I want to decrease my brush size to be a lot smaller. So a quick way to do this is just hold down control option at the same time, keep holding it down while you hold down the mouse and move it left and right to increase and decrease your brush size. So just try doing that. Before you start brushing away that line, make sure that the color palette has a foreground that is black. Make sure that the mask on the right panel is selected before brushing away that line. And just brush away like this. You might want to change the opacity of the brush to 100%. In this case, I have a little bit of leeway just because I'm dealing with water that has texture. So I don't have to have it at 100%. Here's a before and an after. Now at this point, we're gonna repeat those steps with the next layer of the image. Here's a before and an after of the next layer of the image. You can see that manually stitching it allows you to create a little bit of depth to this vertical panel. If you watched my previous video on how to capture a vertical pano, then you might have an image that is slightly underexposed when tilted up at the sky. Let me show you how to blend it in. After dragging it into the image, click Add Layer Mask, click B for Brush. You want to make sure that the foreground is black and just brush away the foreground of that image so that it blends in nicely with the water. If you underexpose the sky when capturing these images, then let's hyperfocus on just this top layer before bringing it into the vertical panel. Click on brightness and contrast and raise the brightness slightly. And then make sure that your foreground is black and just brush away the top part of this image so that it's slightly underexposed. This is really going to make your image pop. You can see here the before and after, how the bottom of the sky is slightly brighter than the rest of the image. Click Command Shift E to merge the layers of that image. Drag the sky into the composite. Click Z and drag right to zoom in slightly. Add a layer mask to that top layer. Make sure that the foreground is black and just brush the horizon so that it blends in nicely. I'm going to crop the top layer of the image a little bit. And ta-da, there you go. You have yourself a vertical piano. This is a frequently asked question that I get a lot. I found that with Instagram aspect ratios, it's hard to get the full piano on there without cropping. Let me show you how to fix that. Enter the four by five ratio that you plan to make that crop for Instagram and click C to assess where you would make that crop. You don't want to click enter yet. Instead, drag the ruler down to the spot where you plan to crop the image and click Escape. Now you have these lines as guidelines to show you where the image is going to be cropped. Click Command Option Shift E to stack all of those layers below into one single layer on top. Now drag the top part of the image down based on where you want the sky to be viewed. Add a layer mask and click on that layer mask before clicking Command I to invert it. This time you want to make sure that the foreground is white because you're brushing in that top layer into the image. I'm not brushing the entire image, only the top part. Now click C to crop to focus on that 4x5 ratio and click enter to crop your image. If you enter the 4x4 crop ratio into Photoshop, you can really get a sense of what that image is going to look like in your Instagram feed. Thanks so much for watching guys. If you enjoyed this video, the biggest compliment to me is if you could share it with someone else that would also enjoy it. Of course, hit subscribe to stay up to date on new videos and feel free to comment below if you have 
any drone related questions or stories to tell. I would also really love to hear your feedback on what topic I should cover next. If you're interested, I also do online educational consulting and hands-on workshops where I teach you how to fly over whales and dolphins. More information is on my website and in the links below. I'll see you in the next video.